Magavan and Melanine, and well met indeed. I'm Arakia Galadirathan, the head of Divide and Conquer, and welcome back to Divide and Conquer as we continue on with the Anduin campaign. Now, what I shall say to begin with is that I am a little disappointed uh, upon my return in that um, quite a lot of work has gone into Divide and Conquer since I have been away. And I am so eager to try and play with all of the new changes and also to try and show all the new changes off. But the changes are so extensive that were I to sync the current Dropbox build that we use for the mod, if I were to sync that with this build, which has the three YouTube campaigns on, I will almost certainly lose all progress in the campaigns. Uh, and that puts me at a little bit of an annoyance because the major change that you will all see with version one and has been tested extensively by better testers and I've seen it, I've see, already seen it in a few custom battles, is we now use Z3N's battle AI system called Skynet AI, and the computer is now much better at um, battles than it was in the past. It's now far cleverer and it's nowhere near as stupid as it was. It will actively flank your units with its cavalry and it will really flank your units. It will try to trap your general and surround him so as to cut off the head of the snake. And it will do everything in its power to avoid running headlong into stakes and just basically lining up in front of you and walking at you. And I really want to test it out and I really want to play with around with it, play with it and see what it's like and show it off to yourselves. And I can't because I can't sync it with these games. So, it makes me a little, ugh, a little, ugh, like, can't be bothered kind of Your feeling Lord. about these. But I will plough on nevertheless, because I don't want it to be a mark of watching the modder, but there's a chance that you might, l I might lose my campaigns halfway through all the time. I don't want that to become a trait of my channel. Obviously, we lost the Darwinian campaign. And I don't want to lose the others. Uh, so I shall continue on, despite the fact that these have none of the new changes. You won't see any of the new dwarves in this. You won't see any of the Khazadum dwarves, nor the Erid Luin. You won't see the new elves, the Hobbit movie elves. You won't see those. Um, and there's quite a few other little changes here and there. I mean, this very day, as I said in the Welcome Back video, I'm going to now record the videos um, relatively near to when I upload them. So I'm recording this on a Sunday, and I'm going to upload it. You will be watching it tomorrow on Monday. Uh, so it's, they're going to be like that now. They're not going to be weeks ahead in advance. So that's better. That's certainly an improvement. I can't remember why I just said that, though. My mind has completely gone off track. Oh, well, there we are. It will come back to me. Uh, you are all heading north, where you will become... Yes, your orders, my lord. Yes, my lord. Can't do anything with them. Um. What's the free upkeep here? Who can remember? I certainly can't. Three free upkeep. Plus three free upkeep from the Citadel. Ah, splendid. Then train some of them and let's take them north as well. By your command. What was I talking about, Android? Oh, yes, because I was saying about changes. This very day, this Sunday, I've just made a load of modding changes that were in um, the to-do list before I left and um, gathered from the testing log. Let's throw all our money into troops. We're going to need them. Uh, one of the big cha uh, changes that I did today is there's a load of Anduin ancillaries that were lurking in the files that aren't used, and I have since added them. So if you send a general to Rakuberg and you keep him here for uh, about five-ish turns, there's a chance he might get a bear as a pet. If you go to the mountains and you linger there for ten turns, there is a very, very small chance, 5%, that you will get an eagle as a companion, and then that general will then have an insane line of sight and get a lot of authority. Your orders, my lord. Uh, there's a few others as well. If you go to Leotholt, you could potentially get a woodman spear and woodman cloak, and they give you a few advantages. There's also some for Roskabel, uh, Celleberg and Meitelberg and Goblin Town. So there's a few more ancillaries for Anduin added in, which is good. Um, we're currently just holding, aren't we? Yeah. I need to get Roskabel, I need to get Khazadum. Oh, and the army that's coming from there is going to be coming down to help, because we, if we take Dol Guldur, we get rid of the realm of Dol Guldur. Or oh, we can take you as well. So they go south. They might get bribed. 
At that later stage where everything gets bribed. How much money are we making? Ah, oh, excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> Sniffing. Shouldn't sniff, should just blow your nose. Blow your nose. You can count on Telethardon. As your ally, Lord. Uh, nothing really else to do, is there? Shall we end the turn again as our troops all yes, move in preparation? We can go no further, Mil I'm gonna stick you! <laughs> There's uh, no prizes for guessing where they're heading. Uh, also today we added, because we've been asked to add them about a million times by countless users, finally you can all sit back and relax knowing that Black Numenorians are now available for training as Mordor. They come from the Black Tower. They are incredibly rare. We made them so rare that you basically don't even get them. Ah, oh, Khan Margos, you're about to kill yourself on our stakes. I'm terribly sorry. Attack! Uh, the Black Tower is available in Durthang, the castle in the northwest of Mordor. And once you've built the Black Tower, you will be able to train one unit of Temple Knights and one unit of Temple. I believe I called them Guard. One's an archer, one's a sword wielding. Well, just dismounted Numenorians. Uh, before the barracks event, you will only get one of each unit. So you can train one unit as soon as you build the Black Tower, and then they have a 100 turn replenishment rate. So it will be the barracks event before you can train any more. Uh, where's the gate? I've totally forgotten. Not that way, that's a dead end. Over here. Thought it was over here. Uh, and then after the barracks event, they will be available once every 40, uh, 40 turns. They are hands down Mordor's best unit, so uh, they will supplement any strong Mordor army very nicely. However, you need to build a building to get them. You have to get the Black Tower to get them, and then you upgrade it to the Black Castle. Oh, that'll do. Just sit where you are. This fun game again. How much can we move people around? More stakes. I apologise for the completely overpowered nature of stakes, but if what is said to be true with the Skynet AI, and what I've seen so far it is true, the ability to use stakes before the barracks event will be heavily edited, shall we say. Uh, so stakes will, the fact that you can cheat with the stakes won't matter as much, because the enemy should now be far more intelligent than they were in the past. Yeah, that's the hope, anyway. Right, what should we do with the rest of you? Where should we try and defend this time? Archers. Hobbit archers! I've been to Hobbiton. <laughs> well, it's not really Hobbiton, is it? It's a farm in the Matamata -Mata region of New Zealand. <laughs> but, uh... There's smiles in it. Smiles. The Hobbit homes. And it was thoroughly enjoyable. I heavily recommend it. Lovely weather when we were in Massa Massa. Group up, ladles. Thank you very much. Uh, you're on your own. Fastred, the greatest of all of our forces. Splendid, 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 splendid. Uh, I should also like to take this opportunity to explain what I plan to do in terms of recordings from here on out and what I would look to do is continue with the one a week theme of each series uh, and I would hope to do Anduin will go up on a Monday uh, I've written it down in my little book Anduin will go up on a Monday Enid Wythe will go up on a Wednesday and Umbar will go up on a Thursday. Then there'll be nothing on a Friday nor a Tuesday. Those days will be empty, void. And then on a Saturday I'll look to try and do lore videos. And on a Sunday will be the continuation of the Soulstorm campaign. Uh, as that one seems to have gone down reasonably well, which I'm pleased with. Uh, it just means I've got to actually perform now. Whereas before, obviously, I wasn't doing too well. Uh, I've got to step it up. Try and take down those dreaded sisters of battle. Uh, am I on the right keyboard setting? Yes, I believe I am. Okay, let's do this and let us hope that it does not crash.
Oh, freezing up a bit there. Not sure, not sure. That should be alright. Should be okay. He says, touch wood. Here they come. Khan Margos, the leader of the Easterlings of Rune. The Runic Confederacy. There he is. And here they come. I should heavily require that you are all running. Oh, they're not running, they're not running, they're not running, they're not running. Should have paused it, should have paused it, should have paused it. Oh. Now we're running. And off they go. Right, they're protected by one, two, three sets of stakes. I am terribly sorry for the cheating nature of this. But there's nothing that can be done. It's just too useful. Almost half the army... 10%. Killed on the first set. They've slowed down by the second ones, though. Oh, and then they're running. They're going to catch them. Curses. What about the Khan himself? And he's dead. Whoops. Run, men, run! <laughs> they are chasing you down. Uh, there are quite a lot of new units. If you haven't seen the I'm Back video that I did, then um, do check that out. And you will be able to see a variety of new units. Mostly just new skins. But Khazadum has got its own roster now. Uh, of course, there's the two Black Numenorians, but they're not in the video. So don't try and look for them, because you won't find them. Uh, there's a new Hobbit unit for Bree. Oh, what on earth is happening up here? Come now. Chase him down if he's being an idiot about it. Ah, oh, they're only light cavalry. What's he going to do? Charge us in the rear? Or is he just going to go for the square? He's going to try and charge us in the... Oh, he's turning around. Those three men will do quite well against that light cavalry band. Oh, not so well, in fact. We continue like this, we will smash the enemy. One of them's dead already. Another one is dead. So, that was the schedule, as explained a moment ago. That's what I hope to do. Every now and then there might be two videos of a, of a campaign rather than one. And do also... Stay tuned. It probably has already gone up by now, but I'll put it in the feature section of my channel when it does go up. But Little Blue Ferret kept a little bit of a travel uh, diary. It's not necessarily a travel diary. It's just um, she took videos of some of the coolest things that we saw while we were out and about. And in the video that she will have done, possibly by today, maybe in the next day or so, she did pop it up on Sunday, but um, we had some problems with the sound, so... Favor. Victory will be ours. Yeah, uh, we took it down. And... But the main point of this little story that I'm rambling about is that I am in it. And you can see what I look like for those of you that desperately wish to know. Oh, they're running before we even get, in get involved. Oh, I didn't zoom in, did I? Idiot. If we continue like Probably this, killing more of our own men than we are of them, so... Pull them out. Spearman. Just leave the spearmen. Um, so, yes, look, stay tuned for Little Blue Ferret's travel video. Also, she and I will probably continue doing uh, some of the Lego ones and. The is very much in uh, what else did we have there? That, um, she's going to get a new computer. She's got the money for it now, so. She will also be able to continue with her Sanctum videos, and I'll join her with those. 181. <laughs> Whoops. So she'll continue with Sanctum videos, and I'll be in some of those every now and then. The Lego videos and Orcs Must Die. All of which should now be far better quality with the recording, because she'll have a computer that can handle it, similar to my own. Oh, I didn't press play on my timekeeping device. How long do we think has already gone? Uh, let's guess five minutes. Yeah, five minutes sounds about right, doesn't it? Try and keep it for 25, 30 minutes again. I apologise if I sound unenthused, but I do really wish I was showing off one of the new... Uh, all the new features, basically. Just every new feature. Umbar just declined, apparently. Should we go and have a look at why they're declining? 
What's happening down here? Oh, did they capture somewhere else and now they've lost? Yeah. Oh, no, they've lost Gobel Tofalas. Oh, cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. Oh, another big change, I can tell you, is that... Some of you may have already seen, but Harad no longer own and Karagmir in version 1. At the start of the game, this is now a rebel province. I also moved to the city, so you can't... It won't be there anymore. And Canned have been given a vastly new look for many of their units, but they've also been stepped up to join in most of the fighting. And the... Imlad Khanan and Harondor Arena is now dominated by Harad and Kand. So Dol Amroth has to deal with Harad and Gondor now has to deal with Mordor and Kand instead of Mordor and Harad. And it just adds for a nice interesting experience. So if you've played as Gondor before you'll now get an entirely new experience as you're fighting new enemies. And Kand play like nothing like Harad. They are very heavily cavalry, cavalry orientated and they will run you down no end. So it creates quite a nice little interesting new experience down in the south there, which is good. Dol Amroth had a little bit of a change up to a few of their units. I um, spoke about that briefly in the I'm back video. Otherwise, that's uh, about it. Numerous little bug fixes, a few changes. The khazad campaign is being worked on as we speak and will be fixed by Kalatharok. Apologies for getting your name wrong, sir. Uh, but that is absolutely marvellous news. He's made incredible leaps and bounds from what I've read of his work on the group. So version 1 is going to be incredibly good. And hopefully have fixed, um, if there are any remaining little bugs, they're all, they should all be gone now too. So all in all, it's coming along rather nicely. But if we turn our attention now back to this actual campaign, we are very much on course to win this. Uh, that, that loss of that Khan Margos army essentially means that the invasion on Brirenholt has now ended. We've made it through alive, and we have no concerns. Our victory conditions are to defeat the Orcs of the Misty Mountains and the Shadow of Mirkwood and take 25 regions. Now, Shadow of Mirkwood only have Dol Guldur, I believe, left. Um, I couldn't, I didn't look when we were off the thing. Uh, the Orcs of the Misty Mountains have Anon Enorod and Dol Bryn, and that's it. So, it's looking rather Lord, promising. My Lord. However, we're about to be attacked and we've got a pitiful army. Lugnag is coming and he's very powerful. My lord. By your command. March to exhaustion. Oh, this is why we're training things. Oh, we're making great money. Keep training, training, training. Orders. Take you two as well. We can go no further today. Orders. As you Shift wish. the defenders out. March there you Ra Do I need Rakiberg? Like yeah, I do. Oh, of course, because we've got a dilemma up there as well, haven't we? And what of our training? Selberg's coming along. Dwinberg! In two turns. Dwinberg will be able to head south and join us in Gaia, which has got a lot of our generals. Dear, dear. Uh, you'll also be pleased to hear, well you may not be, it depends how you feel about family trees, but Dunland in the future will now have an actual family tree. They're no longer Teutonic, Teutonic, and that will mean that they die to regicide far less. Additionally, Khand also no longer have a Teutonic, Teutonic family tree. They are also royal now. Few steps have been made to increase the family trees of others so they might not die as quickly. Both... Lurts and Ugluck are now members of the family tree of Isengard, which should help them stay alive a little bit longer. Um, Dogledore has a special, unique system to make sure that they don't die from regicide. So there's very few. There should be very few regicide-related deaths in the future, which is good news because that was a major problem for us. Of course, the volcano is fixed, as you um, saw from my Northern Dunedain end video, and the biggest. My personal favourite change is Meeblebop's work on making every single bow and arrow animated. So now the units will draw an arrow, knock it onto the string, release and fire. And that just massively helps with the immersion. The only um, units that won't have an actual arrow are horse archers because of the way that their model works. It's virtually impossible to change the skeleton to get them to include an arrow. But they fire so quickly and you rarely notice the horse archers that it makes a little difference. Ah, the ring has moved, which is good. Dwinberg has built a catapult maker. One turn. 
The One Ring is now in Khan. Um, the One Ring does not matter to us this time because we don't need to defeat Mordor. Uh, also, those of you, particularly if you are watching uh, R Travesty's Let's Plays, is, uh, I believe your name, thank you very much for pointing out the Undertower's flaw with Mythlond, and thank you also to Dutch Barrel for bringing it to my attention. The Undertower's is no longer a victory condition for Mythlond. No, sorry, you pointed out Chelkar, didn't you? Of course. Chelkar is no longer a victory condition for Harad, so uh, as Kand start with it, you can now play the whole game allied to Kand and never have to betray them. Which is useful. Your will, my lord. Of course, you can always buy it. I mean, if, if, you, if you become particularly wealthy, I could buy all three of these regions rather than go to war with my allies. But as the dwarves have gone to war with the elves, did I stay with the elves? I did, didn't I? Yes. So, once we've sorted out whatever's happening with Angmar up here, who didn't attack us, very will, interesting. Ah, curses. Get rid of those bandits. You could probably go if I can get you back to train up. Wish. That'd be good. Your will, my lord. So our army there is coming along very nicely indeed. My lord. So As much so that they are no longer attacking. Actually, Warg riders in there. I could probably move the army out of Breer and Holt, but I don't know what to do about Have the orcs yet. They won't be very I'm good. They've got no money. Old Bryn as well. I could do with getting Goblin Town back, but yes, my lord. Why are we yes. going up here? We shall hear you out, but do not expect. I must inform you, we cannot agree to this. Good. We have found some common ground. That is all. Why was I sending him up here? This is the problem. This is why I shouldn't take three-month breaks. <laughs> no idea why he's going up there. Did I just see that this region? Oh, this region is owned Without by rebels. Right, I had to Old Bryn then, my friend. Out. Our Celeberg force shouldn't affect our income. Ah, but we are about to take a lot of units out of free upkeep. Which is a shame. So, probably don't train everything you're about to train. Take a little break. If we could pull all of our forces together, so bring Breer and Holt out, bring Dwinberg out, the army from Celeberg, the army from Austin Gyle, and besiege Dol Guldur. We might be able to win. I can't recall if Dol Guldur have somewhere else there. Ah, no, look, Lorien have got Reaches of Mirkwood. So they have only got Dol Guldur left. But they've got all of those forces surrounding it, including Shadowguard. Quite the challenge. Quite the challenge. I'd really want Roscobel back as well from the Blooming Dorwinians. Who are the Dorwinians at? Dorwinian? Who are the Dorwin Rim, which is the collective name of Dorwinian? Who are they allied to? They remained allied to the Elves. And what of Dale? Who did Dale side with? Dale sided with the Elves. Ah, oh, we should join in. We should take on some Dwarves. But we've got to deal with what, <laughs> deal with our immediate problems before we start turning on Dwarves. The Dwarves are very, very powerful. Some of the best changes, the best, some of the best changes with the Skynet AI are that, uh, are that they it. The enemy will now seek higher ground when it is on the defensive. So where in quite a few of my battles through my four campaigns, you will have noticed that I have attacked an enemy and then I've set my army up defensively and then I've sent archers over to pepper the enemy until they come and chase me. And no longer will that work. The AI will now seek higher ground and they will stay on higher ground unless they are really, really forced to come at you. So if I sent five or six archers at them now, they will try and rush my archers. But um, if I just sent one unit in to annoy them, they will probably now leave them alone. We should retreat. So that's the change. But additionally, if they're aggressive, they will now be very aggressive. Uh, they will attack you immediately. They'll think about it better. They'll plan it out better. Uh, but the bigger changes are that if you're at in just in the fracas of melee, in the ongoing pursuit of battle, if you've got... Uh, if if you have got units, if they have got units standing out in the open and you're shooting them with arrows, they will then immediately try and counter that. No longer will they just leave an army uh, or a battalion getting cut, rained on with arrow fire and doing nothing about it. They will now actively try to stop your arrow fire, uh, which is a very good improvement. 
Oh, look, nine of them left now. Leather Tanner, oi oi. Now, do excuse me for just one moment. I'm terrible at doing two things at once, and I must just reply to this message. Use a different... Use a different what? Very good question. Use... Apologies, everyone. Utter silence reigns. I'm terrible at texting. Absolutely awful at it. Big thumbs, tiny screen. I just can't do it. I don't have particularly fat thumbs. I just have large thumbs. Very frustrating. Big bones within a mic spec. I don't know. Too... Yeah, you have bones in your thumb. Dislocated my thumb. Very painful. Right, let's decide what we should do with Breer and Holt. Do we abandon the defense of it there? Do we think it will be all right? Are the orcs going to come for it if we move from it? Most probably. But I could really do with a massive onslaught of Dol Guldur. And Dwinberg is now ready, so... Yeah, let's do it. Dwinberg, leave behind them and them. Obviously. And... We don't want them. Yes, Yes, that's quite the army. Fulcred. <laughs> we shall continue tomorrow. The mighty Hobbit general that is Fulcred is on his way. Your will, my lord. Yes. You gentlemen can all come Mark with us too. Uh, Austin Gar, yes, can anyone? Yes, 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 you can. We're combining forces. Yes, my lord. Send Fulcred back to get Brathor, and then we'll bring Fastred out of Breer and Holt. Leave behind that unit of archers. Hobbits and the footman, woodman as well, I suppose. Yes. Oh, it doesn't like us very much, does it? Dear, dear. Oh, we can get two units of them, though, and there'll be free upkeep. Always very nice. Now the orcs may move on that, and that could be Ooh, the downfall of our entire campaign, but we won't know till we know. In my time in New Zealand, the Lord of the Rings sites that I visited were Amunhen and Nenhithoil, the lake outside of Amunhen, and also Edoras, Mount Sunday is its name in real life, in real world. That was a fantastic day, glorious sunshine. Climbed to the top of it. Quite the views, quite the views. Don't try and bribe me, come off it, Variags, we have no problems, you and I. Good man, good man. Hiding from the enemy. The Breeland are doing well, and the Dunlendings are not. Dinosaur's got a hero shrine. They have not moved out yet, so. Yes, my lord. Hmm. With your will, my lord. Your orders, my lord. Yes, my lord. Um. With honor. Bjorn, move up. Tomorrow. Austin Guile, leave behind a unit of them. See what happens. Move up. Yes. We're losing money, aren't we? Yes. Hand over fist. Goodness gracious. 1,000? Your orders, my lord. Making yes, my lord. How many units have you got? Six. How much space have Your you orders, got? My lord. Six. Perfect. You two we join together and tomorrow. come and help us. No oh, it's going to be lord. so difficult. It's going to be so difficult. And in the north, we have Lugnag knocking about. But we're not going to be able to get rid of him with that army. That army is pitiful. I haven't got much else to do, though. Get a morale bonus with the Hero Shrine. End the turn again. I've also given the biography trait to Adrahil and Imrahil. Tells you a little bit about them. Mostly, we don't really know anything about Adrahil, other than he is Boromir and Faramir's grandfather. And, of course, he is Denethor's father-in-law. Likewise, Imrahil is Den, uh, Boromir and Faramir's uncle, and after King Eomer of the Mark weds his daughter Lothiriel, he becomes father-in-law to the King of Rohan. So uh, Dol Amroth's pretty connected. They've got they've got friends in high places. So they've got biography traits as well. Apologies for the breathing in. I remember watching the "I'm back" video back to myself, and I 
forgot that um, before I went away, I was actively trying to stop the inhaling of breath that I uh, that I keep doing and trying to breathe like a normal yes, human. But uh, hopefully that Lord. change is taking effect. Ah, look, he's sodded off. Oh, we only need the castle, and the castle's got a rubbish defence. I'm gonna stick you. Yes, my, your orders, my lord. Yes, my what lord. What to do? What to do? What to do? What to do? Do we go hasty and attack before they're even here? Oh, I'm so want to, but that's such a that's that's a foolish manoeuvre, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yes, I also think lord. I probably will go to war with Dorwinian. I mean, screw it. What on earth? They've got Regent Spearguard and Darwinian men at arms in Roscobel. And it's still a village. Well, that's impossible. That is a technical impossibility. I am a warrior. It can't have the town big enough to build that. Where's a spy? Get me a spy. My lord. My Southern lord. Mirkwood, you'll do. Yes. Yes. Oh, very cheeky. I forgot about these. I wonder if this is going to get a copyright claim. Probably not. The games normally let you off, don't they? That is the most unconvincing disguise ever. But it looks like he's been successful. <laughs> yeah, look, they haven't got a barracks. No way, absolutely no way they could get those troops. They've got axe guard and spear guard. Two units of Dawinian men at arms, Thorn Riders. Dawinian's Thorn Battalions have been increased by one, and they now also have a mounted crossbowman unit. So they are now very, very good at dealing with Run. We can't oh, what are you doing? You're on my team. Fight for your people as if they were my own friend. Of course the Hyre Beng now actually look like the elves from the Hobbit movie. He'll be very, very pleased to hear that, yes, I am certain. Your orders, my lord. Who can we leave behind? It doesn't matter. Twenty two outriders, you go to Dwinberg on your own. Yes, my lord. So Thrandall's realm now has the look of the Hobbit elves, and Kazadum has the look of the Hobbit dwarves, and so does Erebor. Erebor has a slightly less armoured version of the uh, dwarves that we see in the film, and Kazadum has the more heavily armoured version of the dwarves we see in the film. But they each also have different... Like They actually look like two different armies now and no longer just a clone of one another. Which is always ideal when you're modding. You want things to be unique. We've the, the changes in the three months I've been away have been cracking. Really, really positive. And the beta testers have all been phenomenal. So thank you very much to everyone who has tested it. And indeed is listening. Oh, mission failed. Freeland and the Shire. Brer and Hulk got a hero shrine. Hell yeah, it did. Wow, we can just leave them up there. If they're not going to attack us, then screw it. As soon as we take Dolgaldor, or if we lose, either way, orders, my lord. Yes, yes, my lord. We will get a lot of yes. our money back. Your orders, my lord. And try yes, and tempt the enemy out. Yes. Your orders, my lord. See if they come for us. Yes, yes, my lord. Hello, friends. With honor. Your orders, my lord. Yes, my lord. Because if we take Dolgaldor, the faction's defeated. And look at the minute. It's got so... It's got nothing in it. Orders, it's got absolutely nothing yes, in it. Yes, my lord. I just don't think we have enough to take it. Your orders, my lord. Oh, I don't know. We've got reasonable army. Oh, we want to split that yes, up a bit. Someone Your else orders, go with... My lord. Assembling a Bjorn. Greetings, most oh, it's Grim Bjorn, isn't it? My friend, please send an emissary to... Well, the battle for Dolgaldor is not going to go down yes, in this episode. That will be the pretty much the entirety of the next episode, I expect. But it will decide whether or not Dolgaldor are going to leave this world. So we'll give it one more end turn. And then we will see what happens. See if Kamul takes the bait. Prime position to launch a I don't think he will, but uh, the two Black Numenorean units for Mordor, I'm afraid, are just clones. So the dismounted sword unit is the same as the no officer that stands next to every orc Lord. battalion, and indeed is mounted with the Nazgul. I'll just have a drink. 
and the archers are the same as Kamul's shadow rangers. They have the same look. Oh dear, voice went funny then. Take Litash, they say, but we're not even at war with Angmar. Your orders, my lord. Oh, we've definitely tempted them, but all they've done is pull their other army Honor. out. We shall continue tomorrow. We are heavily in debt. Oh, the Orcs of the Misty Mountains are moving. They've actually moved positions. Rohan have got more people heading out of Goblin Town. I think I will end the episode there. Rather out of the blue, I know. But um, I, I think that's about 25-ish minutes. And if we get too much further forward, Dolgaldor will attack us. And I'd have to just save it before that one anyway. Because I do want to keep these first few down to a reasonable length. Um, as they're mostly just introductory as I am returning back. So that will conclude the 27th episode of the Anduin campaign and the next episode will of course be the attack on Dogul Dur. Now if I remember rightly I haven't even looked at the other two campaigns but with Umbar I think we are soon to take back Umbar so stay tuned for that one and the Ended Wife one we've pretty much won haven't we but um, I'm preparing an attack on Linden I believe and that's where we were with that. We're in a bit of we're in a bit of peace in both of these at the moment Umbar being the exception Oh sorry excuse me everybody Oh dear oh dear. So recap stay tuned for little blue ferrets travel video where you'll be able to see me if you do so desire uh, stay tuned indeed on every day of the week bar tuesday and friday for uploads from myself this week may be sporadic i don't know if i do a soul storm one till the week after this week and there obviously won't be a law video this weekend as it's you're not watching this till monday anyway so the weekend's already gone so it'll be next weekend if at all as it's my mother's birthday so Unsure if I'll be able to make one on that day. But rest assured, they're in the works. They're on their way. But for now, that will conclude this episode. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. And I hope to crack on with the campaigns and get them back to full glory. So, until we speak again, dear friends, Navar, Naden, Perimad, Melonin, and farewell.